Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install Home Assistant onto our used Dell Optiplex that I got from eBay. This is the perfect machine for Home Assistant as it's cheap, it's small, and it's got just enough power to be perfect for Home Assistant. Follow along to learn how to do it yourself. Before we get started with our Home Assistant installation, I wanna talk about why I think a micro PC should be at the top of your list if you're buying hardware to install Home Assistant. I bought this Dell Optiplex 3050 off of eBay for about $80, including a power supply. The computer itself was about $65. For $65, we are getting an Intel Core i3 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of SSD storage and on a Samsung drive, two USB ports in the front, four USB ports in the back, wired internet, wireless internet, display port, HDMI, Bluetooth, and an additional slot for an NVMe if you wish to expand your storage. Not only that, but we have a case, which you would hope so, on a computer, and a fan on the inside to help keep this thing cool as it runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This should be great value, for about $80 all in, especially when you compare it to something like a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi, while it is smaller, needs a lot more equipment to get up and running on Home Assistant. You're going to need to buy an SSD, an SSD to USB adapter or enclosure, a case for the Raspberry Pi, a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. You may or may not need a micro SD card or a micro SD card adapter. Um, starting at $100, and while the price is dropping, it's a no-brainer to get the cheaper device with everything plugged in, ready to go, and a little bit of space to upgrade in the future. Not only that, but the Intel i3 processor on this machine should outperform the Raspberry Pi 4 across the board. To install Home Assistant onto this micro PC, you're going to need a USB flash drive, a keyboard and mouse, and an HDMI cable. You will not need the keyboard and mouse and HDMI cable or a screen all of the time. It's just to get set up with this and then we can run it headless without those the rest of the time. So if you need to borrow it from another computer, that will be fine. Don't feel like you have to go buy one. Before we get started, I wanna explain what we're about to do. The first thing we're gonna do is download a software called Belina Etcher and an operating system called Ubuntu. We will use Belina Etcher to write Ubuntu onto a USB flash drive and then we'll plug that into the computer. The computer will boot into the Ubuntu operating system. We will then re-download Belina Etcher and download a Home Assistant operating system image. We will use Belina Etcher to write the Home Assistant operating system directly onto the SSD of the computer. So I've just plugged in the micro PC and we're gonna let it boot and then we're gonna boot into BIOS once it's ready. So it's now running diagnostics and I'm gonna press F2 on the keyboard to get it to boot into BIOS. And we have a few settings to change before we prepare our USB flash drive. The first setting that we're going to do is check our boot sequence and that we are enabled for UEFI right here. So that's good and was ready by default. The next setting that we're gonna do is go down to secure boot and ensure that our secure boot is disabled here. These next two are optional, but I'm going to do them. The first is performance, and then we're gonna to go to Intel Turbo Boost, and we're going to enable Intel Turbo Boost, and then down here in the corner, press apply. Click okay. Sorry, my mouse is acting a little weird. And the next thing we're gonna do is go down to power management, AC recovery, and make sure that we're set to last power state. So if your computer was on and you lose power, it'll turn back on. If your computer was off and you lose power, it'll stay off. This is great. Um, we're gonna be using this computer 24 seven. And so at some point in time, there might be a power outage and you want it to turn back on so your lights and security and everything keeps working. So now that we've set those four things and made sure we're good to go, we're gonna click in the bottom left here and we're gonna click exit. And now we're gonna switch over to the desktop PC to set up our USB flash drive. On your desktop, open a new internet browser and go to etcher.belina.io and download the etcher. I'm on Windows 64-bit, so I'll be downloading that installer and just saving it to my desktop. 
and I'm going to click run and I agree. And while that downloads, we're gonna to go to Ubuntu, ubuntu.com slash download for the desktop. And I'll have uh, both these links in the description. And we're just gonna download this ISO real quick. And also put that on my desktop. And when that's done, we'll continue on. So once those are done downloading, open Bellina Etcher and go to Flash from File and choose the Ubuntu ISO. For select target, choose your USB device. Mine is my SanDisk here and then click Flash. And this will take a moment, so we'll come back when it's done. All right, and now that that's finished, we're gonna go ahead and remove that uh, USB flash drive from the computer and plug it into the micro PC. So now that we have the USB flash drive plugged into the micro PC, we're going to turn it on and let it boot to BIOS. This is the Ubuntu bootloader, and we're gonna do try Ubuntu. So just press enter there and we'll let this get started up. So now that we're booting into Ubuntu, we are not going to install this. We're just using it as an operating system that can see the SSD that's inside the micro PC. So we're just gonna click on try And this will let us run the operating system off of the USB drive so that we can now download the Home Assistant operating system and Belina Etcher again, and then write directly onto the SSD on this device without any additional hardware. Inside of Ubuntu, we're gonna to have to do a few things before we get onto the Home Assistant install. And the first is connecting to the Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna click these dots down here in the bottom left and then go to settings. And now I'm gonna choose my local network and type in the password. And we're connected pretty quick. So next we're gonna open Firefox and we're going to go to home-assistant.io, the official Home Assistant website. And then we'll go to documentation and installation. We are looking for a Home Assistant operating system for generic x86 or 64, and that's just a CPU architecture, and that is what our micro PC is running. We've got some warnings here to make sure we have the correct BIOS settings enabled, which we have already done. And we have some dependencies for Ubuntu to run Etcher. So we're gonna come down in here and click Copy and then I'm gonna click on the show applications again and click on terminal. And I'm just going to paste the lines of text that they gave us from Home Assistant and then press enter again and let all of these packages update and download. And while that's running, we'll go back to the Home Assistant website and click the link down here for the Home Assistant operating system. And we're just gonna go ahead and download that so paste the link into your browser and it will start the download. And we will also download Belina Etcher. And on the Belina Etcher website, I'm gonna come down and click Etcher for Linux 64-bit and click download. I'm going to open it in the folder. I'm going to right click it, go to properties, permissions, and allow executing as a program. And then right click it and click run. Blina Etcher has now popped up and we will flash from file. 
We're going to choose our HAOS generic image. And then for our target, we're going to select our Samsung SSD. And then I'm going to click flash. And yes, I'm sure. All right, and so our flash is complete. So we will turn off the computer. And remove the USB stick. So now the micro PC is turning on without the USB drive attached. And we are booting into Home Assistant. Home Assistant has now loaded and booted completely. Under the system information, we can see that we have no IP address. That's because right now this micro PC has no internet. I would strongly recommend that you use a wired connection from here on out. Just plug in the micro PC to your ethernet cable and just stick it next to your router and be done with it. You really don't need physical access to the device anymore. But if for some reason that's not an option for you, I can now walk you through the steps to set up wireless internet on your micro PC. Um, we can see here with our system information, we have two interfaces. We have the IPv4 for ENP1S0 and then also WLP2S0. I'm going to assume W means wireless and I'll be using that to set this up. You do need to have your Wi-Fi name and password handy at this time. But to start, we will type network update and then the interface name, which is WLP2S0 space dash dash IPv4 dash method space auto space dash dash IPv6 dash method space auto space dash dash <laughs> wi-fi dash auth space wpa dash wpa dash at, uh, psk space dash dash wi-fi dash mode space infrastructure space dash dash wi-fi dash ssid this is your wi-fi name If you have any spaces, uh, make sure you're using quotes around it. So for me, it's just one word, but if it was not, and it was Dallas House, that's how I'd type it. And that's the same for the password if you have a space. Um, I don't have spaces, so I'm just typing Dallas, then dash dash, Wi-Fi, dash PSK, and then this is now your Wi-Fi password. Press enter and it's gonna to try to connect. And it was completed successfully. So we should have an IP address now. We can find that out by typing network space info. And we do. So using this IP address here, we can go to it on our other computer and connect to our home assistance instance. Open up an internet browser and type in the IP address that was provided earlier, followed by a colon and the numbers 8123. That is the port that Home Assistant is hosted on on your machine. Go ahead and hit enter and you are now connected to your Home Assistant server on your local machine. At this point, you're pretty much done. Create that account, create a password, log in and see what's available on your network already. Play around with some of the buttons and see how it works. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you need any additional help or something didn't work like you thought it would, please leave a comment or message me on social media and I'll try to help you in any way that I can. I hope to do some future videos on setting up Home Assistant and the next steps going forward from here on how to get add-ons set up, how to build a Zigbee network, and how to build some really nice automations.